Hi friends, in this small presentation on single use plastic which was held on 29th September at Rail Wheel Factory, Bangalore. I would like to make a small gist of the presentation here for the benefit of all the members who can see it at any time. India generates 62 million tons of municipal solid waste every year. And you will be surprised to note only 75% of the waste generated is being collected by the municipalities. And out of which only 22 to 28% is processed and treated. The remaining goes to the landfills. Landfills means it's not going to be touched for a long time. So if I am putting it in, a, in actual terms, 62 million tons have been uh, generated 75 percent that is 43 million is collected out of which only 12 million is processed and the balance 31 million is going to the landfills that means 50 percent of the total waste generated are not treated at all it's going to the landfill and they are going to lie there for a long time am i creating waste if you ask this question to yourself the answer is that yes per capita calculation if we are making it i mean we are generating around four times our weight on an average it is 217 1.7 kilogram of garbage per person per annum which is being generated in the country. Now, if you ask me what is the main type of waste which we are generating? Number one, wet waste. Number two, dry waste. All of you know it. It's not a very a big thing, wet and dry waste. You know, but in this, this particular uh, buckets which I am showing here, these were given by Municipality of Delhi when they had conducted a seminar. They gave it to all um, the attendants um, who were uh, attending as delegates from various NGOs. They have been given free of cost. But again, it is also in plastic. We are trying to eliminate the plastic waste, but we are uh, giving it in plastic only. Anyway, if you see the wet waste, all of you know vegetable and other products which are being bought by you every, uh, you know, Every day we are buying it and we are wasting it. We are eating food, but 100% we are not consuming. We are wasting it. And household waste, dust, old broomsticks, and crayons, etc., etc. Everything is being wasted. Those are all part of waste, wet waste. And you know why I'm saying it's all, most of them are organic waste. We can say like that, biodegradable. And of course, clinical waste also has to be taken, like injection, medicines, all those things, unused medicines, diapers, uh, menstrual cloths, and uh, cotton, etc., etc. Everything, all these things are coming under wet waste. And what is dry waste then, which can be recycled? These are non-biodegradables, largely. Packing materials, or plastic items, or glass and metals, these are all the ways which have been generated by all of us. And of course, if you want me to give the list, it's a very big list. If I am giving it, I think it will not be sufficient for me to conduct this program. Lots of things. General classification, you can take, take it as empty cartons and metal boxes, you know, plastic items like wrappers and also so many plastic containers, etc., etc. Glass and metals also are going to be waste in the long run. Yes. So, aluminium foils, you can take all kind of, uh, you know, uh, chemicals, you know, all those things which are there in household metals, everything, you know, these are all recyclable dry waste. So, waste means wet waste and dry waste. A, a large categorization I have given to you. Friends, Waste is wealth. Absolutely, there is no doubt about it. Many of the countries have realized that waste is a very great wealth. India is also trying its hand, but I can't say that it is completely successful. Yes, 
if we are proving that complete waste can be managed and recycled back then we can say that its waste is a wealth as far as the waste wet waste is concerned composting and biogasification can help us to completely eliminate the wet waste and for dry wa waste whatever is the plastic items or any other metal items all these things if we are properly using that five or approach reuse recycle refuse reduce and repair all these things can help us to make our waste a wealth here is an interesting data that uh, total waste if you are taking it as 100% wet waste constitute 65% plastic waste 18% and other dry waste 17% this is the total plastic in the waste share of plastic in waste the 18% plastic which is a part of the total waste if we look at the actual data india generates around 25940 tons of plastic waste every day one ton is equal to 1000 kg you know it 25940 tons every day we are generating it and 40% of it is still remaining uncollected that is around 10376 tons per day is not being collected and which is a city which is uh, uh, contributing more towards the uh, plastic waste delhi tops the list then comes the chennai then uh, kolkata like this this was a data which was collected in 2019 now india recycles only 30% of the plastic waste which is generated or annually disintegration that is the items which we are throwing as waste must get mingled with the soil and it must vanish from the scene organic waste takes a week or two we are not bothered about it but paper cotton wool and wood all these items take some time these are all going to affect our environment because we are cutting the trees to pre prepare paper or cotton yes we are taking from the plants woolen items as well as you know wood all these things come from the environment so trees are being cut animals are killed all these things are there it also takes some time to disintegrate what is more formidable is the non biodegradable items like tin aluminium it takes 100 to 500 years to degrade it non biodegradable means it is not that it will not biodegrade it will also get degraded it will take 100 to 500 years for aluminium and tin and for plastic bags it takes 400 to 800 years and glass bottles god alone knows if they are saying it's 1 million years no having discussed about all these plastics so far now i am coming to single use plastic first of all before going into the single use plastic and what is the definition of single use plastic in india let us try to understand what is single use plastic is there any difference between plastic and single use plastic if you ask me i will say that there is no much of difference plastic is a plastic we are using it only for a single time take any plastic items which are there in your house we are using it only for a single time i'm um, suppose you are going to throw it again it may be recycled and it can be used for another one or two times three times maximum again it is not going to be of any use plastic is going to be a non biodegradable headache for environment and we need to um, therefore i won't say that single use plastic is different from other plastic yes plastic is plastic single use plastic is little bit uh, i mean i need we need to take concern more concern about the single use plastic now let us understand how much single use plastic is there you know uh, we can talk in terms of per capita share of single use plastic how much is the sup in plastic waste plastic waste per se is 18% in the total waste we all know it now out of this 
a data says that 2 to 3 percent only are the uh, a single use plastics but let us not go by that uh, some of the websites which are giving all this data officially they are saying that 10 percent of the total plastic waste are single use plastics so let if you go by that that 10 percent if you are able to manage and if you are able to eliminate i think we are doing a big service to the environment now you all know that single use plastic ban happened in on 1 1 7 2022 india has banned 21 single use plastic waste again total single use plastic had have been banned i can't say like that but 21 items have been identified as single use plastic which are vulnerable and we need to remove it that's why on july 1st prime minister of india has announced that all these single use plastic will be banned so when we are talking about the single use plastic in our country we can def define it as under plastic commodity used once for the same purpose we use it for the same purpose i mean if it is a uh, plastic glass plastic bottle for that purpose we are using only once after that it cannot be used at all completely other plastic can be reused or recycled but this is but this particular item is used only once and for the same purpose and then it is thrown in the drainage or in the garbage bins now this is the data as per plastic waste management amendment rules 2021 this is what is the definition which is given for the single use plastic in india now the ban was imposed on manufacture import stocking distribution sale and use of the identified sup items now we are going to talk only about this sup items which have been banned and we will comfortably go for a quantification of 10 percent of the single use plastic right yeah a broad classification of single use plastic items in india can be of nine types the first to five are earbuds plastic sticks plastic flags and candy sticks ice cream sticks or thermocol plastic cups glasses cutlery items and wrapping films or a sweet boxes if those um, you know wrap, wrappers are there around the sweet boxes those are single use plastic items invitation cards cigarette packets plastic or pu pvc banners uh, vinyl banners they are called vinyl banners these are all single use plastic items in india which have been identified it's a broad classification and what is micron i will come to it a little later now let me tell you what are the banned items in India. I told you 21 items are there. All 21 items have been listed here. Earbuds, plastic sticks for balloons, plastic flags, candy sticks, ice cream sticks, thermocol and plates made of plastic, cups made of plastic, glasses made of plastic, forks made of plastic, spoons made of plastic knives made of plastic, straws made of plastic, trays made of plastic, stirrers made of plastic, wrapping or packaging films around the sweet boxes, wrapping or packaging items around the invitation cards, wrapping or plastic uh, foam films around the cigarette packets, plastic or PVC banners less than 100 micron thickness, plastic carry bags less than 75 micron thickness and non-woven plastic items which are less than 60 gsm so this is what is the definition which is given what is micron i will tell you friends this is a very interesting slide size of micron how much it is i am making a small representative figure here first you look at the coffee grind which is shown in the top and this coffee grind and uh, it is bigger 
and then if you see the sand i mean this is not the actual size i am magnifying it for you to easily understand what is the size of a micron a coffee brand is something very very small i mean coffee grind coffee grind is very small it may be of a, like a granule which is visible of course and then lesser than that is called beach, beach sand then comes the salt you know granule salt granule then comes the hair the human hair is less, little lesser than the salt size of the width of the i mean diameter of the salt but now after hair anything which are there are not visible wbc white blood copper cells then smoke i mean the the smoke which is emanating from the factories and all smoke are from cigarette this smoke then comes the bacteria still smaller and then comes in the last is a micron now we can say the coffee grind must be around the size of a micron which is uh, represented here if you think that coffee grind is something similar to the micron size which is notified here now you can imagine what will be the other sizes real sizes of the other bacteria smokes and wbc all those things that means micron is a very very microscopic uh, one so here when they have banned the um, plastic items plastic bags which are having 100 micron so along with this um, 120 micron see micron and um, multiplied by 120 120 micron will be something like your hair human hair so this has a or little bigger than the human hair so if you see the human hair i have put a diagram here also 50 to 70 micron is that so double the human hair i mean thickness you can say that uh, that much thicker plastic bag can be allowed i mean you can simply to cal to calculate if you go to a shop or if you are going to take a plastic bag you just compare with your hair and see the double size of your hair if that much thickness is there you can take it no who will have a measurement uh, you know stick with you or a scale with you and who is going to measure it Uh, in the actual situation so you need to have an a rough idea if you are have, you are comparing it with the human hair and if it is double the human hair that much size bigger than that human double double human hair is the normal size of the plastic bag which is allowed below that it's not allowed so this is as per the plastic waste management amendment rules in 2021 alternatives to banned sup now the sup has been banned right i agree but whenever we are going to ban the sup single use plastic we need to tell the people that these are the alternatives many of the people are saying that there is no alternative alternatives are available but there are challenges in getting the alternatives i agree with that but we need to understand that certain plastic waste or banned with an idea that there will be some alternatives so the government has suggested some alternatives for example if the carry bags no to plastic carry bags and yes to all this kind of carry bags can be of linen can be of cloth can be of uh, some other material which is biodegradable this is all acceptable as the carry bags so uh, this is one aspect about the carry bags which is a major item in the uh, you know um, single use plastic then comes the cutleries nowadays everywhere cutleries are found even though one and a half years is going to be over after the single use plastic ban still we are seeing all this plastic uh, i mean uh, you know spoon cutleries all these things actually ideally we must use only the wooden ones as cutleries now when we go to the plastic you know uh, plates then you know you have got uh, thermocol plates plastic plates 
or uh, aluminium foil uh, plastic um, plates and all those things are there which we are using it you know if you go to any hotel any restaurant yeah you are even in the uh, payment dollars these payment shops and all these in petty shops these people are giving the uh, aluminium uh, covered uh, you know plastic plates which is not correct instead we must use all these things on the right side you see the ever silver tumblers you know once upon a time we were using it i think we are all um, belonging to the nine, uh, 20th century when when we all started our life in when we are we were 10 years old or less than that we were not knowing what is a plastic at that time so the plastics was completely absent in those days and life was very good and this tumblers this um, you know leaves banana leaves or or um, dona patal all these things were used um, used in those days and now they are coming back again we can it's all available now in the market so we can use all these things third item is the wraps wrappers all beautiful gift packets are all beautifully wrapped and we are all very happy to uh, take a gift from the people seeing that red color blue color lovely colorful shining uh, wraps we take it but say no to them and accept compostable uh, wraps it has come to the market now maybe a little bit costly no doubt about it and you know uh, there are there are some traditional packages which were relying on the leaves is shown in this slide and the world world i mean when we were all in all the newspapers were used for packaging we all used it ordinary um, you know uh, the threads were used and we all were happily taking all the packed materials but they used to keep leaves inside the papers because papers per se are having some chemicals in the printing material so if you are seeing some of the um, printed uh, paper uh, bags and all wraps yes the printer letters are having some chemicals in it so for the for the food items we need to go for leaves and once packed in on leaves and then outer um, the package can be of paper then the banners you know everywhere we are using the flex banners flex banners have become a part of our life somebody was saying the flex banners have been banned in bangalore but still till date it has not been banned still people are using flex boards vinyl boards all these things which are using heavy chemicals in it and this is not going to biodegrade for a long time but better to go back to the old era when we were using the fabric banners so uh, this is also possible and some of the uh, technological companies are coming with some of the reusable uh, banners which are on digital basis so we must think of going back to that one and cost effective models we have to take it definitely now after showing all these things that we have taken steps now i would like to discuss with you some of the steps taken by government of india especially uh, when they brought the single use plastic ban they have come with certain rules and regulation they completely they, some of the people are now telling me manufacturer has to be stopped then only the plastic single use plastic will go but it has been prohibited it was prohibited it was banned manufacture import stocking distribution sale and use of single use plastic was prohibited by cpcb under the instruction of government of india advised the leading petrochemical uh, industries not to supply plastic raw materials you know plastic pellets they, these uh, petroleum pellets are the main source of plastic so the petrochemical industries have been advised not to supply it thirdly they also stopped the import of banned sup items it's also stopped then existing commercial licenses have been cancelled for selling sups yes and one time certificates have been issued to around 200 manufacturers of compostable plastic on day 1 of july 1st 2022 
वन टाइम सर्टिफिकेट कॉम्पोजिबल प्लास्टिक मैन्युफैक्चर बिकॉज वी नीड टू प्रोवाइड दी ऑल्टरनेटिव द गवर्नमेंट हेज टेकन स्टेप्स capacity building workshops were conducted for the msmes to go for alternatives uh, to sups now many of the young entrepreneurs i am coming across saying that sir we are doing biodegradable napkins we are preparing biodegradable flex banners instead of flex banners we are uh, using the digital banners like this many of the youngsters are telling me on several occasion that they are coming with a new ideas the startup companies are coming to prepare the sups cpcb has instructed to monitor cpcb has been instructed to monitor the progress on day to day basis so these were the steps taken by government of india penalty is also imposed cpcb has given a very elaborate uh, penalty arrangements and uh, in uh, one example i can give you and this is by telangana uh, they say that um, you know 1 lakh for the first offence for the manufacturers for the individuals who are going to carry the banned items they will be fined 500 rupees if they are going on continuously uh, using it 5000 for irresponsible disposal of plastic items it is there For every state, there is a uh, there is a ban. Is there penalty? Is there one lakh for the first in first offence for the manufacturer? In case if he is continuing to pre- um, prepare this uh, single use plastic, they will be fined one lakh rupees. Then fifty uh, thousand for not printing the Telangana State Pollution Control Board registration number on products. They need to you know Telangana government has come Pollution Control Board has come with the registration number on products. they have to print it and 2 lakh rupees for the second offence which will also follow the seizure of the banned items and equipments and cancellation of license these are all the penalty classes again whether penalty has been enforced for everybody i can't say for um, sure present status of sup let us understand what is the present status of sup now let us talk about the present status of sup experts say that they have certainly created awareness and produced some research the researchers all are saying that there is some awareness has been created not that people are not aware of sups now still 50% of india's plastic waste remains unprocessed as yet here when they are taking up the data again they still find that the old thing which i have shown in the first slide 62 million you know wastage is generated and 50% of that is still not being processed it is going to the dumps landfills the same situation is still continuing even after sup has been completely banned enforcement is inadequate true alternatives are either costly or not available this is another complaint which is coming from the people alternatives are either costly or not available my my dear friends i would like to say that alternatives will come it will come always whenever a new rule is brought it will be very tough to change the mindset and change the practical present situation it's not going to happen in one single day we need to continuously monitor it and ensure that single use plastic is completely eliminated problem persist yeah problem is persisting if you go to a big bazaar ma big bazaar uh, chain in a mall or any other of any other big uh, outlet you will find that yes uh, they are using the um, you know cloth bag and they are using they are not using the single use plastic they have been completely controlled by the cpcb no doubt about it but what about the street vendors they are still using it the problem is persisting with them with the small vendors they they cannot afford if it is a costly item they cannot afford yes the problem is persisting that is why still we are seeing the single use plastic everywhere some of the ngos like you know center for science and environment they have told that the ban has become a paper tiger again 
This is a criticism for a reaction. There will be a reaction and there will be an NGO which will be saying, no, that is the ban is not uh, enforced. Even I, I also may say that the ban is not enforced strictly. Well, these stories will go on. But banned SUP items constitute roughly 2 to 3 percent. This is what some of the NGOs are saying. But really speaking, it must be 10 percent. So this is what official claim is being made. So having told about all the single use plastic, what is the right I am having single use in telling all these things to you? Well, Gentlemen, now I would like to tell what Green Circle is saying. Why Green Circle is talking about plastic? Because we are committed to the environment. We at Green Circle are continuously doing the plastic removal operation. We engage the students, we engage the children, we engage the residents to see that plastic bottles which are lying on the side of the roads and colonies, these are all removed. We always think that we are we are also one of the important parts in the part in the environment. So whatever we are doing a little bit to the environment is on the principles of think globally, act locally. So these are all our contributions and I do this kind of environmental activities in Bangalore as well as I was doing it in Delhi along with my team. Every Saturday we are doing in Saturday Shramdan to remove the plastic from various public places. Here in uh, in Bangalore I am doing it on Sundays in Elakanka and we are tying up with the uh, panjais and municipalities to remove the plastic so collected. They are also cooperating to the largest extent possible from their side. So friends this is one positive activity, grassroots level activity which we are doing. We also continuously discuss what to do for the environment. Our members in a very casual and simple way sit on the floor in an eco chapel and we do discuss the things in a very casual unstructured way under a tree. We regularly do this kind of discussions in order to have a common commitment towards environment. We also plant trees. We have started a Mission Green Elahanka here and we are monitoring the trees also. We have planted so far 400 trees and we are monitoring it. And the tree adoption project has been newly enforced by us. The tree adoption project involves every individual to contribute either physically or financially. If they are financially contributing 1000 rupees for taking care of the trees for three years, that's a great thing they are doing amidst their work schedule. Many of the youngsters may not be able to come because they are all involved in their works. They can only spare Saturday or Sundays. But we, the seniors and uh, women, they all come together and we are doing the planting work. And we also see that de-weeding is happening, watering is happening. All these things we are adopting the um, adopting the trees saplings for about three years. And by doing this, we are contributing to the mother nature. And of course, we are giving environmental education also. We do workshops, we do training programs, and we we create awareness among the children. So they are our hope. And we are doing all these activities for Mother Nature. And I hope you all will join us in rendering your services to the Mother Environment, Mother Nature. You know, it's very it's a need of the hour. We need to do something for Mother Nature. Thank you very much for your patient listening. You can reach me in greencircle01 at gmail.com or my number 9818354430 so that you can also contribute in any other manner, any manner, whatever you deem it fit. The only idea for doing all this work is to 
save our mother nature for our posterity so friends bye to all of you this is a presentation which i have made at rail wheel factory elahanka bangalore and thank you very much for patient listening please do subscribe to our channel birded selva once again thank you all